Let's review Earth's days, years, and seasons. Well, length of a day. Let's start there. We know that each planet spins on its axis. The spinning of a body, such as a planet, on its axis is called rotation. The time it takes a planet to complete one full rotation on its axis is called a day. Earth rotates in a counterclockwise motion around its axis when viewed from above the North Pole. As a location on Earth's equator rotates from west to east, the sun appears to rise in the east, cross the sky, and set in the west. Only one half of Earth faces the sun at any given time. People on the half of Earth facing the sun experience daylight, and this period, period is called daytime. People on the half of the Earth facing away from the sun experience darkness, and that's called nighttime. Hmm. Earth completes one rotation on its axis in 24 hours or one day. As Earth rotates on its axis, it also revolves around the sun. The motion of a body that travels around another body in space is called revolution. Earth completes a full revolution around the sun in 365 and a quarter days, or about one year. We have divided the year into 12 months, each lasting 28 to 31 days. And here's a picture of the sun, moon, and earth system. You can see the earth rotating on its axis, and the moon is rotating as well. The moon revolves around the earth, the earth revolves around the sun. The sun stays in a stationary position. Earth's axis is tilted at 23 and a half degrees. During each revolution, the North Pole may be tilted toward the sun or away from the sun. When the North Pole is tilted toward the sun, the Northern Hemisphere has longer periods of daylight than does the Southern Hemisphere. When the North Pole is tilted away from the sun, the opposite is true. So here's a picture of Earth with its 23 and a half degree angle. You can see its axis of rotation in a counterclockwise position. Note, Earth's axis is always tilted toward the North Star. The tilt of Earth is in relation to the plane of the orbit, not the Sun. The angle at which the, Earth's, at which the Sun's rays strike each part of Earth's surface changes as Earth moves in its orbit. When the North Pole is tilted toward the Sun, the Sun's rays strike the Northern Hemisphere more directly, and this region is warmer. When the North Pole is tilted away from the Sun, the Sun's rays strike the Northern Hemisphere less directly, and this region is cooler. The spherical shape of Earth also affects how the Sun warms up an area. At a point near the equator, the Sun's rays hit the Earth's surface more directly, so temperatures are higher there. At a point near one of the poles, the sun's rays hit Earth's surface less directly, so temperatures are lower there. That makes sense. Let's compare the, Earth, the area over which the sun's rays are spread at the equator and the poles. As you can see, the sun's rays are spread more towards the equator and less towards the poles. The number of daylight hours on any given day of the year varies with location. Areas around Earth's equator receive about 12 hours of light a day. Areas on Earth's surface that are tilted toward the sun have longer than 12 hour days as they travel a longer path through the lit part of Earth. Areas on Earth's surface that are tilted away from the sun have shorter than 12 hour days as they travel a shorter path through the lit part of Earth. During sub summer in the northern hemisphere, Areas north of the Arctic Circle receive 24 hours of daylight. At the same time, areas south of the Antarctic Circle receive 24 hours of darkness. In winter in the Northern Hemisphere, the polar areas experience the reverse conditions. So here's a picture of Earth showing the angles of degrees and the different ways that Earth is tilted and the way the sun is coming onto the earth at different parts of the year. Most locations on earth experience seasons. Each season is characterized by a pattern of temperature and other weather trends. We experience seasons due to changes in the intensity of sunlight and the number of daylight hours as earth revolves around the sun. This is caused by earth's tilt. At an equinox, sunlight shines equally, hence the word equinox, on the northern and southern hemispheres. Half of each hemisphere is lit and half is in darkness. 
as Earth moves along its orbit, the sunlight reaches more of one hemisphere than the other. At a solstice, the area of sunlight is at a maximum in one hemisphere and at a minimum in the other hemisphere. So you can see the position of the sun on the summer solstice at noon. Take a look at that. It's really, really high in the sky. The summer solstice is the longest day of the year. Now the winter solstice down low there is the shortest day of the year. And you can see the position of the sun in the picture. It's much lower in the sky. At the winter solstice, the North Pole leans away from the sun and is in complete darkness, and the South Pole is in complete sunlight. At the summer solstice, the North Pole leans toward the sun and is in complete sunlight, and the South Pole is in complete darkness. Equinox literally means equal night. On the vernal or spring and autumnal or fall equinoxes, day and night are nearly the same length. Neither hemisphere gets more sunlight than the other, so both have similar seasons, fall in one hemisphere and spring in the other. And here's a picture of the equinoxes. You can see in the spring equinox, days are longer than nights and days get longer. Okay, and down in the autumnal equinox, even though this is not to scale, let's note that, the nights are longer than the days and the nights get longer and longer. And one final picture talks about why we have seasons. It says we experience seasons because the Earth rotates on its axis that's tilted in its orbit. That 23 and a half degree tilt causes the different hemispheres to be at different angles to the sun at different times of year. Because of the angle during the winter, the energy from the sun must travel through more atmosphere to reach the poles. Also, a given amount of energy, a given amount of the sun's energy is spread over a larger area. So this also shows a picture with the equinoxes and the solstices. So March 21st, that's the vernal equinox, and it's spring in the northern hemisphere and autumn in the southern hemisphere. And then on September 23rd, that's the autumnal equinox, and it's autumn in the northern hemisphere and spring in the southern hemisphere. The summer solstice is always on June 21st, and that's when it's the northern hemisphere summer solstice and then it's the winter solstice on December 22nd.